Friends, Johan here again with another edition of Unscripted. Um, I wasn't actually planning on doing a video this week, um, but a couple of things happened that made me do it anyway. Number one being that I was gifted a uh, webcam, <laughs> a new webcam, uh, as well as probably more importantly, an external microphone um, for recording sound. So, um, <laughs> of course, I had to try to see how that would pan out. Um, I originally started doing these videos on my old MacBooks built-in uh, old, old school camera with uh, the internal microphone as well, and then moved on to trying to record them with my iPhone 6. Uh, we've now escalated in somewhat of a quantum leap into a full HD video camera and an ex external microphone. Um, I don't know with me having a face mostly made for radio if that's good or not, but uh, Obviously, uh, let's try and see what happens. Um, another thing that made me do this video is that uh, I've been challenged. Um, <laughs> and as a lot of you probably saw last week, I did a review of uh, one of the world's most iconic beers, the Westlatern 12, uh, paired off against this guy, the Rochefort 10, hailed as many others as being one of the greatest beers in the world. And, I rather quickly jumped to the assumption that the Westvleteren 12 here is, if not the best beer in the world, then probably the best Belgian beer in the world, uh, and most certainly, almost uh, without doubt, the best beer in its style. Um, and of course, um, our local brewer um, got a hold of me and he told me, well, hang on a minute, you can't just go declaring this the best beer of its style without at the very least pitting it against our very own uh, 10. And no, of course, Michael, I couldn't. Um, so I went and threw that into the comparison mix as well. Um, I had a good taste of it and paired it up against other, took some, uh, took some notes in my little black book here. And, with the intention of, of, of obviously publishing this on uh, on my blog within the next couple of days. Um, what happened then is in the midst of doing this, I realized, well, there's really no point in doing a best of the style with just three participants. So I've been running around town lately, uh, visiting some specialty beer stores, uh, getting anything within the Belgian quadruple style that I could get my hands on in an effort to do a bit of a more uh, nuanced comparison of uh, this particular style loved by so many. Um, and it's, it's been, as you can see by the balls behind me here, it's been, it's been a fun week uh, so far. Um, and of course I, I will be, I, I've been doing notes as I said, and I will be publishing this on, uh, on the blog. Um, the reason I'm here today is because uh, a couple of the beers I found uh, within the style on my, on my tour around town were uh, of particular interest, I think. and. Uh, certainly something you don't see every day in that they are not only Belgian quadruples, but they are, let's see if we can get this. You see that? Uh, well, I'm having a hard time getting the autofocus to work here, but what it does say is it's uh, oak aged. So these are beers that are not only <laughs> insanely complicated and, and complex and hard to brew. They are beers that have also been aged on, aged on oak afterwards. Um, just really quickly to recap, Belgian quadruple uh, style are beers that are usually dark, uh, usually very malty, usually have little to no uh, hop character at all, and they're usually insanely uh, potent in terms of alcohol, uh, upwards of uh, 12 to 13 percent alcohol by volume. And Obviously, the, there are beers that are not easy to brew, that are not cheap to brew. And then on top of that, somebody got the brilliant idea that, hey, let's throw this in oak for a while and and um, see what happened. So I have a couple of specimens here today uh, that I want to, well, taste with you really quickly or, or as quickly as I possibly can, being the rambler that I am. Um, the first specimen you saw already is by La Trappe, um, La Trappe, I guess. A, a Dutch brewery, a Dutch monk brewery, um, actually also brewed by monks of, uh, that are members of the Trappist order that made these other wonderful beers. Um, La Trappe are a monastery that are probably a little more modern in their approach to things than um, 
the beers, uh, the monastery, the beers from the monasteries that we tried uh, last week. Um, and they're pretty good with marketing and these sort of things. Um, that what we have here is their Oak H Quadruple, um, which is a limited edition beer that's actually brewed in, in, in batches. And the fun thing about this is you can go to the back of the bottle and you can read the batch number. This one is actually batch number 17. And then what you, what you do is, uh, if you need more info about the beer, you put out, you pull out your smartphone, your computer, whatever, and you go to the website, uh, <laughs> Of the brewery and they'll tell you the exact information about yeah that's not gonna work <laughs> they're gonna tell you the exact information of the exact composition of the beer that you have in your hand so if i go to the website and i look up batch number 17 um it'll tell me that it is a mix of beers aged in five different kinds of woods uh um it will tell me that the main components, 67% uh, of this beer is from a uh, beer that's been aged in, mus in used muscatel casks. It will tell me that there's some br used brandy casks in there, some used Oloroso sherry casks, as well as some entirely new oak, actually split between um, some medium toast and some high toast um, casks. So it will also tell me that it is this particular blend was completed in 2014 in July. So this has, after all the oil gauging, this has been, well, just over a year, just maturing on in the bottle to produce something that looks a little like this. Beautiful red amber sort of thing going on here. Um, not a whole lot of carbonation. Um, yeah. Um, you get that. That's funny. You get, um, if, if you saw my last video, you'll see that I, I ranted and raved about the uh, multi fruit characteristics of the beer, the sweetness that's going on. You get all that in here as well. Um, but you also get first and foremost there's like this really potent whiff of oak obviously uh as this has spent some time it doesn't it the website doesn't actually state how long it's been on oak but judging by this I, I would say at least a while um and you get what's really interesting as well is you get um you get so many components of the uh, actually of the brandy of the uh, Moscato of the of the wine, sort of the Moscato wine um, thing. You get you get a whole lot of that. I, I can't even speak. This is so complex. <laughs> wow, there's a. There's a lot of oak in this. Um, there's a lot of smoke as well. That's really interesting. It's like, I don't know if that's from the toasting of the wood of the new casts or if that's from some of the used casts, but there's, there's like, a tr there's, there's actually like quite a lot of smoke and oak going on in this. Um, you get raisins, dark fruit. There's like the plum character from the, uh, I'm, I'm guessing from the brandy here. Um, Really nice quadruple like style. Uh, it's, it's it's typical. It's I, I would liken it a bit to the uh, to the Rochefort Ten here actually, uh, but obviously with a lot more going on in terms of, of complexity because of the uh, the oak aging and the subsequent blending. This is actually uh, this is an intriguing product. I think this this is bottled at. Um, yeah, ten percent alcohol by volume. Um, not girly brews these, <laughs> not by a long shot. Um, ten percent alcohol by volume. You get a little bit of alcohol on the the back of the throat. You don't get it on the nose, uh, but you do get it when when swallowing. You get it like a bit, um, on the aftertaste almost. Um, this is. I, I made a comment about about some of these other beers being ridiculously easily drinkable and dangerous beers. Um, this one is not 
like that at all. Well, it, well, it is, but it's not to the same extent because you got this major complexity. These wood notes. This feels more like a spirit than a wine, actually, or, or a beer, actually. This, this feels more like a beer. Oh, crap. <laughs> Cut. No, uh, this feels more like a wine or a spirit than it does a beer. There we go. Um, obviously, the alcohol must be working. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, second beer here would be the Panapot Grand Reserve. Hold on, guys. Second here. There we go. The Panapot... Grand Reserva. This is a vintage brew, actually. There you go. 2008. So this was brewed in 2008. And then from reading the label, uh, I have learned really quickly that this has been aged 14 months on French oak, first and foremost. And then it spent an additional eight months on um, used Calvado casks. Calvado is a French... It's like a French brandy made uh, from apples that is uh, native to the Normandy region of France. Uh, really beautiful product. If you haven't tried it and you're into spirits as all, at all, I would uh, totally recommend grabbing a, a bottle um, and giving it a shot. Beautiful, beautiful product. Um, anyway, so nearly two years of cask aging on this bad boy. Um, so doing a bit of math, that would suggests that after the cask aging this has spent about an additional five years in the bottle um which is a lot uh we should make this an interesting interesting uh new friend the thing is uh, as i mentioned in an earlier video these are all bottle con quadruples are all bottle conditioned beers meaning that they are bottled with live yeast and that they, they will evolve in complexity um with time in, in the bottle so five years is a lot for a beer um so could be good could be bad uh certainly not every day that you get to try a seven-year-old beer so let's see if this is some life left in it oh this is a lot darker um As there's there's some 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 hissing and some fissing going on right now, um, but as you can see, there's nearly no head here. Um, there's some slow bubbles going up here. Um, it's it's lost obviously some with the carbonation probably from the five years or so in the bottle, um, but hopefully there will be some complexity to find here in, instead. Oh. Yeah. Um, roasted, <laughs> really roasted, really oaky, uh, like roasted, almost burnt malt uh, character characteristics going on here. It is. It's a little. It's a little one. It's a little one sided right now. Um, let's have a sip. That is one massive beer. Um, I could probably eat this with a fork if I wanted to. <clears throat> There's this feels this feels more like a, a really good stout than it does a quadruple. Actually, uh, you got these roasted malt notes. You've got obvious sweetness. You got density. Uh, there's some. I'm tempted to say there's there's a hint of uh, English licorice in here, um, and then of course you got you got the oak powering through here. Wow, there's yeah, this is <laughs> this is an oak monster. You get it on the aftertaste; it just stays at the roof of your mouth, just well blasting through. Um, not in a an uncomfortable way sort of like a it's more of a spanish red wine spanish reserva red wine kind of way uh so it's really noticeable those are really potent but it's not uncomfortable 
And then on the very back end of it, you get like the usual quadruple notes of of, uh, of brown sugar, of, of fruit, sweetness, maltiness. This is... This is an interesting brew, um, most definitely. I'm, I'm sort of sad I didn't get more of these. Uh, I think I picked up the last one they had in the shop. Um, I'm hoping they'll, they'll get more eventually. Um, try putting these down for another few years, see what happens. Uh, that's the fun thing about these sort of beers. You can just, like good wine, you can sell them for a while, see what happens. Uh, might do them better, it might not. Uh, back to this really quick um i'm trying i should probably give you i should probably give you a rating of these beers um you taste in, in this one the la trappe you taste the characteristics of the casks that have been used more than you do in this one where you where you primary get the the oaky characters uh in here you got obviously obvious raisin notes from the Moscatel grapes. You got like plum notes from the brandy. You get uh, the the toast from the new wood, and there's like the sherry component sweetness as well going on. Um, it's nice for, for from a, like a fruity jam perspective. This is really nice from like a complexity black mean sort of beat you up kind of beer perspective this is uh this is uh quite amazing and has nearly no carbonation left whatsoever um on a one to ten scale um i'm gonna hit i'm gonna hit this with an eight and i'm gonna go uh, yeah, let's go eight on this one as well. Uh, they, they're just so immensely different, uh, but enjoyable in their own way. Um, that's the fun about this doing this sort of things. You wouldn't you wouldn't seem to uh, find a lot of differences in a uh, quadruple like style, which is the, basically a highly potent uh, multi sorted beer. But they're like these are two different creatures at all. Uh, really quickly, let's uh, look at the ABV on this. Yeah, this is ten percent alcohol by volume as well. Um, Beautiful products. Um, guys, I obviously have a long way to go with this little experiment. I thank you for watching um, this far, and I hope to bring you more notes and even more interesting quadruples in the future. Um, yeah, you know, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks you for subscribing, liking, sharing my things. Um, it, it really does mean the world to me. I'm, I'm still new in this game. Um, but I'm having a lot of fun. Um, subscribe if you like, share if you like. Um, if you want to hear more, not about not just about beer, but uh, about gastronomy, cooking, um, joys of life in general, um, go to my website, johanjohansen.dk. Um, we got some really fun stuff coming up. We just recently posted a insanely long rant on the topic of uh, caprese salad. Um, we will within the next week probably be publishing some notes on this guy our local three-year-old whiskey from Tolan distillery and we will also while this fun little tasting part is going on be publishing a series on my favorite three little word in it in all the world um barbecue it'll be fun we'll be doing we'll We'll be doing the basics of barbecue. What is barbecue? What is not barbecue? We'll be talking rubs. We'll be talking cooking. We'll be talking different types of uh, wood to smoke your stuff over. We'll be talking sauces. We'll be talking eating. Yeah, it's going to be, there'll be like probably, well, five, uh, side dishes as well. There'll be probably five, six posts coming up on the subject. Um, so stay tuned. And as always, uh, keep it metal.